What up, gang? This is Ken Zer, Ken Zilling, Gizzy Gamilligan, and Venom Trilligan. We are back on Corpse Party Blood Covered. Um, I just played, I just finished Chapter Zero, and now I'm playing Chapter One. It just felt a little, it didn't feel lackluster, but it felt like I didn't do enough. It felt like I didn't, I hadn't done enough yet. I'm really liking this new art, too. Let's get back to the game. What am I doing? What are you doing, Ziki Diki? Let's get back to the game. Chapter one, returning. Oh my good, there's no freaking way we're actually returning. A day had passed since the events that... This is cool, actually, I'm seeing. They're coupling a visual novel style with the RPG top, top down style. A day had passed since the events at Shimorenjaku South Apartment. This was to be a significant turning point for me and Mochita. For me. And Mochita might have been another might have been a part of it from the start, except that fate seemed to have other plans for him. Miss Kuan, I uh I have something pressing I need to get to, so if you'll excuse me. No, no, you sit back down, Satoshi. Your score on that algebra quiz yesterday was rather embarrassing, don't you think? Like an owner training a puppy, Kuan gave him a strong glare and held up her index finger in reprimand. For the next hour, I'm going to give you a personal lecture, and you're going to listen, and then the next quiz will be a snap to pass. But aren't you an English teacher? Isn't algebra a little outside of your expertise? Uh, anything's possible if you put your mind to it. She seemed a little taken aback by that remark, puffing up her cheeks like a chipmunk in protest. She's bad. But I think I, I think so far I, I like I still like Miss Yu. Miss Yui is still on top. She's gonna have to do something crazy for, 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 for Miss Yui for her to overtake Miss Yui. I mean like she's gonna have to pull up and just save everybody, bro. Like Miss Yui, she did kind of save everybody. Because if she didn't save um ayumi then all that all that inf the information necessary to survive would have been lost and they would have all died she's gonna have to do something extravagant to overtake miss yui i really like that single braid though that's really cute yeah uh, um sensei. but miss kuon it's startling how alike she and miss yui are yeah i noticed that i'm sorry Looking both bemused and guilty, Machida tried to get up and leave his seat in one swift motion. But he was quickly and easily caught, lifted up, and forcefully sat back down. What type of strength does he have in those skinny arms? Ah, ah, ah. Miss Kuan was smiling. She was actually enjoying this. Who or what am I dealing with here? Miss Kuan was only a slight was only the slightest bit taller than Mochita. This did make her taller than the average, but her arms were small and frail. There seemed to be no way she could have possibly lifted someone of his build. This whole situation was rather bewildering for him, and he made it no attempt to hide his confusion. Now let's begin, shall we? Yes, ma'am. He had no other option. Apparently he was going to be studying algebra for the next hour, come hell or high water. Meanwhile, at a local cafe near the school, Kishinume and I were sitting down to speak with Aiko Niwa, the informant who had led my friends to me the previous night. Are you okay? Did your stomach hurt? I responded with a dismissive gesture while continuing to rub my abdomen with my other hand. Ever since the previous night, I had a constant unbearable urge to pee. Y'all gonna keep doing this stop this now what the hell is wrong with me i mean i know i got scared and i hyperventilated but can that affect my body like this did it change something in me my bladder feels like it's fit to burst then go to the bathroom so where should we begin aiko tilted her head at me looking me up and down seemingly judging my every mannerism by every movement. It was making me feel really self-conscious. 
She has no idea what she's doing in college. I covered my abdomen with both hands and was guarding it from her gaze. Uh, thank you very kindly for your help yesterday. Think nothing of it. I only regret that your friends couldn't get to you sooner. The Saraki Academy is quite large, so it took some time to track down Kishinume and the others. Kishinume and I stared at one another, still not sure how to feel about this strange new addition to our entourage. Ayumi, Kishinuma, you two are survivors from Heavenly Host Elementary, are you not? <laughs> oh, she knows. We pledged never to discuss Heavenly Host with anyone. Which we'd always assume would be an easy promise to keep. But now, casually and out of the blue, here we were. Why? How do you know that? Well, you've been touched by the Ever After. When people come into contact with the Beyond, the color of their aura is changed to something otherworldly, something I can see. Both Kishinuma and I were speechless. I just sat there staring at my palms subconsciously trying to see my aura, I guess. Aiko was smiling at us triumphantly. You said you were an intelligence agent, right? What was it? For the supernatural? And you're a friend of Naho's. That's correct. I'm the one who tipped her off about Heavenly Host Elementary, in fact. The true source of the deaths and subsequent erasures that had turned our lives into a living nightmare was a Sachiko Ever After ritual posted on Naho's occult blog. I'd been a fan of Naho for some time, so when I saw that, I knew I had to try it with my friends from Class 2-9. And as a result, half of those friends were now gone. I suppose you're aware that Naho was involved in supernatural investigations on behalf of one Mr. Kibiki, no? I am. And I know she hasn't been, she hasn't been seen since posting information on Sachiko ever after. Well, my business is of similar nature. I gather data from spiritual hotspots and other supernatural locales and sell that data to my clients for a fair profit. Not always money, mind you. Sometimes I'll do my dirty work in exchange for a particular spirit item that perks my interest. It all depends on who I'm dealing with. It's entirely give and take. They want my information and I want their cash or their artifacts. Basically, Aiko was a very attractive young lady. Yes, she was. But personality-wise, the jury was still out. Her words were calculated and emotionless. Her true intentions a mystery. One could call me an information dealer, but I prefer intelligence agent. And Naha was a good customer. My info on Heavenly Host proved to be her last purchase, however. At the time, Naho was single-mindedly single -mindedly excited about Mr. Kibiki's work. She believed he could qualify for some award with the information I found for her. Say, could you tell me, was Naho there in that other world you found yourself trapped in? Naho died, together with Mr. Kibiki. I looked down as I answered, despite everything she'd done. The memory of Naho's passing was still painful for me. He'd become one of Heavenly Host's lost souls and gone completely berserk. In the end, I was the one who finished her off. I see. I assumed as much. Aiko seemed completely unaffected by this revelation. Her tone remained even and her expression cold and distant. Honestly, I'd had just enough of, of I had just enough of I had about enough of her at this point. She was so devoid of empathy, it was almost offensive. I was genuinely starting to get pissed off. And you're okay with that? I do feel sorry for her getting me wrong. But I had a strong feeling things would end this way. There's no point in lamenting that- There's no point in lamenting- There's no point in lamenting that for which I was fully prepared. Ishinuma continued to stare intently at Aiko with his own brand of cold, emotionless eyes. He was oddly quiet, though his anger was palpable. I clenched my fist. I get what she's saying. You know, it's it's kind of foul, but I understand what she's saying. Like, she Naho wanted this information. Aiko knew what this information was. She knew what it really held. Naho knew what it really held, too. Aiko more or less knew, like, this was not going to end well for her, but Naho didn't care. So, if you know, if you fully expect something bad to happen, 
why would you be surprised or shocked when you find out it happened? You feel me? Like, I don't doubt that she is somewhat hurt by it, but at the same time, she knew already. So we can't really expect too much of a reaction out of her. What about this girl? I believe she performed the ritual alongside Naho. Did you see her there as well? She's talking about Sayaka. Aiko showed us a photo of a girl named Sayaka Oue. No, I can't say I've ever met her. I see. Aiko's expression was so unfaltering. You could carve it on a stone. I couldn't take it anymore. I had to say something. If you're calling Naho your customer, I don't think you can really say you were a friend. My voice was breaking with rage. But even if that didn't hadn't been the case, my face must have read like a book. This icy bitch may have may have only had this icy bitch may have had only one expression, but I surely didn't. Oh my, do you have something against that word? When I deal with my customers, I give them a guarantee of the utmost quality, and I dedicate myself to their satisfaction. It's an unbreakable bus of trust. trust. It's an unbreakable bond of trust, like one would have for their partner. And it's not always something you can say about friendship now, is it? That's... I had no idea what to say. It seemed like Aiko was used to this sort of thing. Her response felt carefully rehearsed, like a sales pitch. Finally, Kishinuma broke his silence. Hey, I do want to thank you for helping us save Shinazaki yesterday, really. But spreading dangerous information just to pay the bills. How the hell can you sleep at night? <laughs> information is just that. Information. It's harmless on its own. There's no good or bad. It's like a tool. It's up to the reci recipient how it's used. Anything can be harmful in the wrong hands after all. Why, that cup over there can be used to kill a man as easy as any knife. Uh, the hell it could! That's bullshit and you know it! Uh, Ayumi, do you agree? Aiko, I'm sorry, but I hate the way you think. I feel it's irresponsible. Her expression remained calm and collected overall, but her eyes blinked several times in rapid succession. It was the first outward sign of emotion we'd seen from her. <laughs> well, now, it seems I've come to be regarded as something of a villain here. I can't say this is new or unexpected, but it never ceases to be disheartening. Aiko quickly shrugged off her sudden outburst and was back to her usual icy self. <sighs> Doesn't matter now anyway. We destroyed Heavenly Host. It's gone. Did you though? Did you though? An awkward tension filled the room, or at least our table. Let's get down to business then. There's a reason I sought you out. Something I wanted to discuss with you. I go produce a thick hard-bound file folder from the light blue bag she brought with her. She opened it several- she opened to reveal several documents of questionable nature. Among them were what seemed to be a family tree, as well as numerous pages fe featuring black magic symbology or images that looked like tree branches. Black magic spell charts. And is that the Shinazaki family tree? You may find what I'm about to tell you a bit shocking. Aiko was looking directly into my eyes now. Her gaze was fixed, intense, and unblinking. What Kishinuma said a moment ago is incorrect. Huh? What do you mean? Heavenly Host has not been destroyed. It still exists, even now. Take a look at this. Aiko placed a black and white photo on a table. It wasn't the clearest of pictures, but there was no doubt that the location it depicted was Heavenly Host Elementary. In the picture, a small girl could be seen in one of those all too familiar hallways, holding a hatchet in her right hand. <gasps> it, it's Heavenly Host! 
Where did this come from? We have confirmation. We have confirmation then. It's a thoughtograph I've taken. I didn't have the pr power to produce a clear image, but this is the current state within Heavenly Host. I don't understand. What am I looking at? I can't even describe what was going through my head. At that moment, I felt like I was about to burst. However, Aiko, Aiko however, remained calm as ever while recounting her story. Let's see. Um, let's start at the beginning. First, the red box from yesterday. After some time, I was able to open it and I found these spirit items contained within. The box I found in Makina's Futen. Inside were apparently two stones resembling Magatama. Common shaped ceremonial objects from Japanese and antiquity. Also included in the box were several more <laughs> stones, as well as lining along the edges consisting of crumpled pieces of thin white paper. <laughs> Unfortunately, most of the box's contents were broken or damaged. This pair, however, was still fully intact. What is that? It looked like almost a demented version of yin and yang symbols. Puzzle pieces that were clearly built to be slotted together. Aiko now held one stone in each hand and was mounting them toward one another as if to drive that point of home. Spirit items are, in simplest terms, items which have been infused with the thoughts and feelings of the dead. Those who bear such objects will be visited by the spirits within them, or at least, or at least for, be forever private to their memories and earthly laments. It's a wonderful thing. I may not look the part, but I'm actually quite an avid collector of spirit items. Kishinuma and I locked eyes again. We shared the same look of bewilderment. Aiko's personality was much more twist twisted than either of us had initially conceived it to be. I tried to get a fix on this little girl's thoughts, and in doing so, I heard a vengeful cry and saw an image of a girl with braided hair in an abandoned school building. My curiosity having been piqued, I took out this camera. At this, she produced an old instant camera and placed it on the table in front of us. And tried to take a photo of the image in my mind. The result is that shot. This particular spirit item only allows me to produce items from the exact moment in which the picture is taken. The past and future alike are beyond its reach. I examined the photograph in greater detail, and a chill ran down my spine. There was absolutely no denying what it depicted. No, I was actually shaking. Without Sachiko Shinazaki, the school should have collapsed. It should have ceased to exist as soon as we escaped. I believe the collapse was halted, perhaps right on the brink even. Maybe because of the person to whom the voice I heard belonged. Aiko motioned toward the photo in my hand. It could even be that girl in the picture. I wonder who she is. That's on what's his name? That's that's, that's what's the name? The girl that helped us, um the girl that helped us escape. The answer was beginning to dawn on me. A sudden cold sensation exploded through my body and I shuddered, as if trying to shake off the encroaching realization. <laughs> Damn! You really think that hellhole is still around? Kishinuma leaned forward. The conversation was clearly beginning to engage him a lot more than it had been. Heavenly host, or rather, the dimension. face that took on the form of heavenly host. Elementary fascinated me from the moment I introduced it to Naho. I began to research it independently and learned that its true identity is, well, something like a new nirvana, a netherworld, or hereafter, an otherworldly plane of death. Though ordinarily, one tends to think of there being only this place and the next. A new nirvana. That's correct. You know of Yoshie Shinazaki, do you not? Yeah. And of her clinic in the Shinazaki estate, wherein the Grimoire known as the Book of Shadows was located? Yeah. Why, how could she know that? 
A million thoughts, a million questions were running through my head. I was speechless. All I could do was sit there and hear her out. It was like a muffled scream or a moan of agony. The sound you make when you want to make a sound but are barely able to. So what is going on? That one was a little more forceful. Accompanied by thrashing, it caused a nearby table light to fall over, rolling along the ground. Please, dear, come now! You need to stay calm! This was Yoshie Shinazaki's clinic, and Yoshie herself was on top of her husband, holding her down with both of her hands. She continued her Shinto purification chant. To prevent Seiji from biting off his own tongue, he had been gagged with a towel. Needless to say, he wasn't looking particularly well. Not far from where this was occurring, Sachiko stood aghast, trembling as she watched the proceedings with hesitant, sidelong glances. Hey, Izanagi! Izanagi! Um, I don't, I'm, I don't think I'm comfortable saying that. Y'all can. I don't think I'm comfortable saying that. Y'all can read it. Seiji still collapsed on the floor was clearly suffering. His body was bent in the most unnatural shape, and he was fervently clawing at his neck. <laughs> oh, she's trying to purify him. He's possessed, and she's trying to purify him. I see, I see. Tachiko's father screamed through his gag, foam beginning to froth from its edges. He was going in his sayonasis. <laughs> Ghostly images of Shinazaki women from ages past smiling, smiled down upon the event from the ceiling, laughing and mocking his suffering. Worse still, some of the women had traditionally blackened teeth, giving their smiles an unintentionally sinister edge. The atmosphere within the room was heavy as if spirits occupied every empty corner, dancing and fitting about freely and joyously. <laughs> Seiji's body sharply bent and started convulsing. <laughs> dear, stay with me, dear! <laughs> Her great-grandmother, Seira, the head of the Shinazaki family was among the black teeth women laughing joyously at Seiji's suffering. Daddy! Daddy! His voice began to weaken and his convulsions began to lose strength. Finally, the last spark of life had left his body. The eyes rolled back into his head and all movement ceased. Daddy, why aren't you breathing? Sachiko looked up, eyes glazed over with tears. <laughs> Yoshie too was stricken with grief and despair. Bro, L parents, holy bro. Terrible family. Like y'all are getting cut off immediately, bro. Like y'all are not invited to Thanksgiving, Christmas, my birthday. Y'all not invited to nothing, bro. Y'all are never seeing, like, you're never seeing my daughter again. This is what it means to be a Shinazaki. To be a part of the cursed bloodline. All men who carry, all men who marry in are guaranteed to die quickly. Not even Yoshe could circumvent that fate. So she turned to the forbidden book, an item she and her family had been protecting for generations from those who might misuse it. The Grimoire, the Book of Shadows. To lose a loved one was a fate she feared more than anything else, so she tried to offset it through black magic. It was an act of truly absurd foolishness. She must have cared for him so deeply she would have done literally anything to see him again, no matter the cost to her own mortal soul, her own immortal soul. It's funny, 
because that's exactly what we tried to do. And hey, what did me, Sonny, and DJ say at that time? You've got to be stupid. Like, you've got to be stupid doing that. Aiko stared deeply into my eyes, seemingly fishing for a reaction to her tail. But then, what happened was what happened next was almost beyond belief. I continued listening, unknowingly stroking the wound on my thigh, as unpleasant memories of my own foolish running with black magic resurfaced. Shinazaki's bloodline that flowed through Yoshie's veins was more powerful than anyone could have known. Its energy spawned something much different than what Yoshie intended. By which, of course, I mean. I instantly knew what she was going to say. From the book she created, a new nirvana. There, one could coexist with the dead for all eternity. It was a new dimension cut from the netherworld itself, forcibly born onto the world of the living. Yoshie must have lost half her sanity right there. She tried to leave her only sa child, Sachiko, in the real world, while living with her husband's soul in the new nirvana. Land of corpses. Land of corpses. However, this nirvana had a mind of its own. Yoshie couldn't possibly control it. Shinazaki or no. I knew that all too well, just like Yoshie. I'd experienced my own tragic failure with black magic at the Shinazaki clinic. Black magic has its own blowback of sorts. Her husband's soul was split apart and scattered in all directions. And Yoshie's life too was on the verge of being snuffed out. She knew she'd made a mistake, she deeply regretted it, and as she took what she could only have assumed to be her dying breath, her soul daughter Sachiko, in possession of nearly limitless spiritual potential, absorbed the entirety of this new nirvana within her own body. Sachiko. That's my daughter. The poor girl collapsed onto the floor. Finally thrashing about as the weight of the entire dimension crushed her from the inside. This action had saved her mother's life, certainly, but death would have surely been preferable. Picking herself up, Yoshie rushed to her daughter's side in tears. Let's go! That's Anata. <coughs> mommy! <laughs> Don't die, mommy! Both parent and child were bawling. Pain mixing with relief, mixing with pain again. Oh, that sounded like a- that sounded terrifying. The little girl buried her face in the Yoshie's bosom and just cried and cried. Yoshie grabbed her tightly in both arms. Tears streaming down her face uncontrollably. By this point, Sachiko's body began producing a dark blue aura. I'm sorry, Sachi. I'm sorry, Mommy was wrong. Mommy has you. So from now on, Mommy will never leave you. She'll never even think of leaving you again. Oh, that's why it sounds like that. Because she's in the bosom. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. As you know, Sajiko is the direct descendant of the Shinazaki line. Thoroughbred. This means her power is greater than Yoshie. It had to be, of course, for her to house an entire dimension within her body. Aiko took a noisy sip from her coffee mug. Please drink quietly. At the, at the time, she must have been the strongest practitioner of dark arts in, the whole, in all the world. Little girl or no. But despite that, she would end up dying. That's right. Same day Yoshie fell and died, Sachiko disappeared. That was 50 years ago now. They were both killed by the principal. This is unsuspected. The principal's heinous actions are to blame them for resurrecting the new nirvana within Sachiko and creating the closed space that we know as Heavenly Host Elementary. Probably because the school was the site of Sachiko's violent demise that her nirvana took on its form. 
Yet even then, when Sachiko was born as a spirit in that realm, she was still all powerful, seemingly continuing to exert complete control over it. I guess that's why she was able to manifest so many different horrible things in there. This was all starting to make some sick sort of sense. The pieces were falling in place and painting was and painting an absolutely awful picture. I shuddered to myself as I considered it. When you escaped, you removed Sachiko from the equation, but the Nirvana remained and is going berserk once more. Should have just disappeared. The world is better off without it. The entire conversation was a roller coaster of emotions for me. At this point, I was just angry, angry at everyone involved in this or in this whole ordeal, myself included. Now then, if I may, I'd like to discuss something a bit outlandish with you. Okay. Would you like to see your dead friends again? <gasps> Nani? That certainly got our attention. We both perked our heads up immediately. Spears had him died in Nirvana and set to roam his ground. Trapped and unable to find rest. As such, your friend's soul might still exist on that plane. There are a number of useful magics listed in the Book of Shadows. Aside from the spell Yoshe used to create a new Nirvana, it's also a spell of revival. Nakashima and I knew about that one all too well. Forcefully returning a life to this plane is, of course, dreadfully taboo, as it's considered an affront to the will of God by virtually all religious organizations. Huh? Ishinuma seemed a bit more confused than he probably should have been. So I suspect that look on my face may have had something to do with that. I performed that spell, the one Aiko was describing. It took hours, failed miserably, and killed my sister. All at once the guilt returned. I lowered my head solemnly. Aiko grinned at me, and I had the sinking suspicion it was because she somehow knew what I was thinking, though I couldn't be sure. And I certainly didn't know how she would. Still, who cares about bullshit like that, right? You can be blasphemous! You can break every commandment! Bring it on! I disagree with that. Jesus Christ, my Lord and Savior. Hold on. Hold on. The Messiah, Jesus of Nazareth. Nazareth. Hold on. You'll do whatever it takes to resurrect your dead friends, no? I'm gonna be honest with y'all. One thing I don't like to be is a liar or a hypocrite. You feel me? Those are two things I hate to be. I might lie sometimes. Because honestly, a lot of times I just feel like lying because it's funny. Or because I just, I just, I, I could just lie. Like, I could just tell a lie. Like, I could tell you right now, like, I've never watched Higurashi. That's a lie. But I could certainly say it. I don't really care. But I don't like to lie about things like this right let me be completely honest if i lost a bunch of my closest friends and it was like very muchly my fault to a very decent extent and i knew there was a way to bring them back to life and i knew god probably wouldn't be happy about that look as much as i want to say i would honor god's will and not do it and not attempt it I cannot 100% say, I cannot 100% say that in this hypothetical situation, I would. I'm not confident that, I, I'm not confident, I'm not confident that I would do the right thing there. I am not confident at all. All you have to do is find that book and cast that spell once more within Heavenly Host Elementary. Your chance of success would be much, much higher there, don't you think? Hold on! Do you have any idea what you're saying? What if things get even worse? I didn't exactly mean to interrupt Kishinuma, but quite honestly, I didn't even realize bro was talking. I was just too focused on what Aiko had just said. You know about it, don't you? Our failed attempt at Yoshie's place, me and Nakashima. <laughs> Aiko tilted her head at me, the same wry smile creeping across her face. She'd gone from cold and emotionless to knowing and expressive in a mere instant. 
I don't think we really believe what was happening to us. It was all just, it was all like a dream. What we saw was impossible. What we experienced was impossible. I thought I was going insane. Shouldn't have been possible. We shouldn't have done it. I just, I want to put all this behind me. But it was real. Aiko pointed to the scar on my neck. And went one step further and lightly brushed it with her hand. I could feel that touch deep within my soul. I suddenly found myself swallowing my next breath, practically choking on thin air. See? You came in contact with something ordinary people could never even imagine. Do you really think you could just turn tail and run from that now? It's funny that, like, Ayumi really got clapped up by a book. She got clapped by a book. Like, imagine, imagine, like, getting beat to death. And the only thing that's nearby you is the corpse of your dead friend. Another one of your friends just not helping at all. And a book laughing at you. A book laughing at you. Oh my, I would, I would never show my face again. I'm, I'm going into hiding. I don't blame her for wanting to turn tail and run, bro. But Aiko, she like, you gotta get your get back. You gotta do something. You cannot let that slide. I look down again, trying my best to avoid Aiko's gla gla glaze gaze. I wouldn't avoid her glaze. S stop. Do you really think I can do it? When I started crying, I raised my head again, intent upon looking deep into Aiko's eyes as she answered my question. <laughs> Where she looked so blurry through my tears. I could tell though that she was smiling at me with that same expression, her new standard. I'm not quite sure what you're talking about. Can you be more specific? Can I really? Yes, yes, what is it? I want to hear you say it. What exactly is it you wish to accomplish? Can I bring everybody back? Nicely done. Aiko patted my head as one might a dog after a successfully performed trick. What that grimoire produces are miracles, spawn from the wisdom of the witches. And these miracles hold the power to bend fate. Even if that fate is set in stone, so to speak. You are a descendant of the house of Shinazaki. A family of immensely powerful practitioners of magic. And since Hinoe is no longer with us, this is something that only you can do. My confidence was being bolstered by the minute. Though, in retrospect, that was likely Aiko's aim. Nonetheless, if there was still something I could do for my friend. But wait! I don't even know where the Book of Shadows is anymore! Plus, you're no longer able to travel to Heavenly Host by way of Sachiko and Ever After Ritual now that Sachiko is gone, correct? Yeah, that's right. That's what Yuki said anyway. Er, Yuki Kano, a girl from the school. I can once again place a bluish white, place a bluish white Magatama stones on the box in either hand. This time fitting them together, but not quite the way they were supposed to interlock. That's where these come in. What are they? They house an exceptionally amount of uh, exceptional amount of spiritual energy, as one would expect given their spirit items from the Shinazaki line. The voice I heard told me about them. They're called Ever After Stones. Ever After Stones. I leaned forward despite myself. They had to shiver down my spine, but now that I heard it, I had to know more. These two are one. Fit them together like puzzle pieces and chant Nirvana, I summon the dead. And all who are in direct or indirect contact with them will be spirited away. We both flinched at her chant, but I go just smiled. She must have intentionally oriented the stones the wrong way so the charm would inactivate. It's the same when you return. She tossed the stone she'd been holding in her right hand into her left, where it clacked together with one another. 
Strange, isn't it? This girl taught me the technique herself. Aiko gazed longingly at the stone. She was clearly utterly enamored by them. It seemed as if they were key factors in unleashing her newfound emotional expressiveness. My focus was elsewhere. Without a doubt, the items Aiko now held in her left hand were extraordinarily dangerous. Possibly the most dangerous, horrific objects in the entire world. However, while Aiko was ogling them in her left hand, her right was feeling around for something in her breast pocket. She slowly removed the producing a black and white photograph. When should she take a net? It was the same photograph I'd seen at Makina Shinazaki's house the previous night. It depicted a young Yoshie alongside her mother and Makina. When Yoshie was in her teens, she adored her Aunt Makina and would often go over to her place for a visit. The Shinazaki family, world famous for their spiritual abilities, and this was when it all started. The surviving elder of the Yagora society felt it was too dangerous to leave these items with the Martuba. So he came here intending to steal the book away from them. From them. But he felt it would be more dangerous for the book and stones to remain together. While he gave the book to Yoshie for safekeeping, he gave the stones to Makina. Agora society, Martubas. Never heard those terms before at all. Then there was that dang book of shadows again. Why did that have to keep coming up? You removed Sachiko Shinazaki from that school, and in doing so, you created the perfect storm of opportunity. Two-way travel to and from the dimension is not possible. It's no longer a one-way world. A new spiritual hotspot, something not of this world has been born. She thrust the Ever After Stones toward me triumphantly and continued to make her pitch, growing more excited by the second. Uh, legitimately speechless, what could I say? <laughs> Don't you see it? That place is a gold mine. People can no longer claim the word of spirits is fake. But that spiritual investigators like myself are lying. It's all different now. A court research could be legitimized. I'm even considering bringing, I even, I'm even considering bringing people to that cursed dimension on tour if I can. Make a little extra cash. <gasps> I don't know about that, Aiko! Kishinuma and I both reacted to this preposterous suggestion with a start. She couldn't possibly be serious, could she? I've deleted the proxy data, doll data from Naho's blog, so no one will be able to jump that way anymore. Only I possess the means to enter that place now. Could she possibly have been bent in thinking? I wanted to shut her look. I wanted to take those stones and break them right there on the spot before anyone else got hurt. But I, when I, when I began conducting these, when I began conducting these tours, however, I wanted to make customer safety my top priority. And you, you seek your friend's spirits, do you not? Well, we investigating that dimension could help you reach that goal. Our destinations are the same, Ayumi. Aiko leaned in as she spoke, her breath scented with the sugary sweetness of that of the extravagant desserts we'd been eating tickled my nose. So what do you say? Let's go back to Heavenly Host Elementary together. One more time, shall we? I really wanted to conduct tours using the paper dolls, but I missed my chance. Now, though, I have these lovely stones. I feel like this must be fake, and I can make a business of it. Aiko seemed like she was on top of the world. That just made me all the more disgusted with her. So how about it? On the other hand, she was offering me a chance to save our lost friend. And however remote that chance may have been, Stack the odds frustratingly in her favor. I still couldn't just say yes, but I also couldn't say no. Honestly, I resented for Aiko for putting me in this position. I glared at her for a moment before I said anything. Can't give that answer right now. Give me some time to think it over. I had almost forgotten Kishinuma was there. 
sudden waves of guilt washed over me. He had an absolutely incredulous look on his face. I couldn't bear to see it, so I looked away. We don't know where the Book of Shadows is anyway. Plus, how do we know those stones can actually do what you say they can? There's no way you could have al already tried it, right? Aiko smiled. She oriented the two stones the way they so they form perfect yin yang symbols and slotted them together once again. Immediately, the stones began glowing a bluish white hue, and a stream of energy started to form around her. <gasps> hey, hey, hey! You gotta be kidding me! Hey, calm down! Watch yourself! I go continue smiling and look directly into my eye. No need to decide now. Think it over. Yes, it's true. The full range of these stones' powers have yet to be tested. The full range of these stones' powers has yet to be tested. So the true danger is as of yet undetermined. She slowly separated the two stones as she said this, and the energy surrounding her dissipated. But they're from the home of Makima Shinazaki, a prominent branch of the Shinazaki tree. Their authenticity and the credibility of my intelligence is hard to dispute. Hell of a thing. Can I see him? Ishinuma didn't wait for an answer. He grabbed the ever after stone from Aiko's hands and began examining them carefully. Hard to believe this is what was inside that box. You weren't planning on keeping these stones all to yourself, were you? Aiko seemed taken aback by the question. Way to go, Kishinuma. You managed to catch her off guard. Half the credit for finding them is due to Shinazaki risking his skin, after all. Aiko seemed to ponder these words for a moment. Well, let's make sure neither of us can go by ourselves. We'll keep one of the stones. We'll each keep one of the stones. Alright. Give me one, Kishinuma. Good thing. Kishinuma plopped one of the stones into my palm, hands, and slipped the other one back into the drawstring house Aiko had brought, brought them in and closed it up. Mm. There. He then casually handed the pouch back to his rightful owner. Feel free to give me a time any call you'd like. And don't worry, I'll even help you find the Book of Shadows, free of charge. Aiko flashed us the biggest, most gregarious smile I think I've ever seen. And when we do find it, you will go with me, won't you, Ayumi? I closed my eyes and gave something up like a half-hearted half-nod, lowering my head without raising it again. It was interpreted as a yes, but I'm not sure I meant it that way. That being the case, it's on me today. Aiko got up and grabbed the check. Oh, she got big money. No, I'll pay for mine. Look out my wallet. I had no desire to owe this person anything. That's so real. I got your smile. Got you this then. <laughs> oh yes, I almost forgot. I'd like you to have this. Aiko handed her thoughtograph to me. No, no, it's not gonna bite you. And I'm not asking for any money from it. So please, just take it with my blessing. I despise her. Ah, me too. Suzumoto, Suzumoto Shinohara, Morishigi, and Miss Yui. As soon as I'm done with those four, I'm breaking the stone. Yeah, I'm right there with you. Better make sure to break the other one too while you're at it. As if he'd been waiting for this cue. Kishinuma pulled the other stone from his pocket. Bro, he done swindled her! Kishinuma? She doesn't know what it's like in that school. I mean, she was actually getting excited about going there. So I helped myself when she wasn't looking. That's amazing! You're terrible! Hey, serious business calls for serious action. So, uh, Shinazaki, 
I don't know how to say this exactly, but about the whole resurrection thing. The whole situation with Suzumoto and the others should probably just be left alone, don't you think? You've gone through so much already and have come really close to dying. I don't think any of them, not Suzumoto, Ms. Yui, Shinohara, or Morishigi, would want that. But that might not be true. Damn it. Shinazaki, just stop. Do you know how much Satoshi and Nakashima have been worrying about you? I'm, I'm sorry. But Kishinuma, please, you have to understand. I just need a little more. I need you to humor me for just a little bit longer. Please, just let me do this. Fine. But listen. You're not doing it alone. I'm gonna keep one of those. I'm gonna keep one of the stones. Oh, that's so sweet. It'll be all right, you know. I turned my gaze to Mikishi Numa's. My eyes must have looked like saucers, windows into a mind full of worry. Ideas and fears spurred by this unexpected turn of events. If anything happens, don't hesitate to call me, okay? I'm here for you. And I don't want you blindly rushing into dangerous situations like you did yesterday. I may not be able to offer much, but I'm confident I can at least protect you from harm. Ishinuma patted me on the head reassuringly as he said this. I had no idea how to react. I felt a warm and safe but also a little annoyed, much like a younger sister being simultaneously comforted and scolded by her big brother. All I could say in response was, Okay. I could feel my eyes bulging from my head, opened as far as my eyelids would allow. I imagined how I must have appeared to Kishinuma, and was momentarily embarrassed. Come on now, let's get you home. Uh, okay. Please let me save. I'm begging you to let me save. <sighs> what? There's a human arm poking out through one of through a hole in one of the garbage bags. Closer expression is from a mannequin. Don't freaking play with me like that. This is nice. I like this. I'm, I'm able to explore the... I can explore this. That's cool. I want to explore for a little bit. See what's around here. I remember running up these stairs with Mayu Suzumoto. At the time, it never dawned on me that the legitimacy of those memories could ever be called into question. Why would it? You graduate, transfer, and get married, you're always still able to see one another as long as you're both alive. But in this reality, it's as if Suzumoto never even existed. Where are all the people? The streets seem unusually quiet. Is it just because of the late hour? Bro, it's a dark hour. Come on then, let's go. Um... Welcome back. Mom, I'm finna whoop you, bro. I'm sick of you. We got beef. News of yet another bizarre death has just come. This time of Mr. Okabe, who was discovered within the city at this location, having suffered a broken spine. Tokyo map was displayed on the television screen, marked with two red dots. The mark here on the bottom provided a headline. Sudden violent deaths remain unexplained. Then it will still be a while. Maybe you should take your bath first, Ayumi. Oh. No socks on the hardwood floor is insane. Leaving your socks on the floor is insane. Without thinking, I left my socks. I just removed from my feet in the living room floor and began walking to the bathroom. Hey, get your socks up. Oh. You bite out of your mind.
This was a bad habit of mine, so ingrained within me that it almost became a ritual. Mom did well to have caught it so quickly, I grabbed my socks and left the room. Can I really bring them all back? If I use the Book of Shadows inside Heavenly Host this time, it just might work. I set my bag down in my room quickly and automatically grabbed my sweatpants and spats. Made a beeline for the bathroom. When I got there, I threw my socks into the hamper with purpose. I began peeling off my school uniform. As I observed myself in the mirror, I began to murmur. Blowback. If I'm not careful, the same thing could happen again. Those burn marks on my neck and arms were eternal reminders of what I'd been through at the Shinazaki estate. I could clearly remember the agony I went through as they formed. I remember watching them sear into my flesh out of thin air, blood spurting from them as if I'd been knifed. I only survived because he no way sacrificed himself in my place. <laughs> I have to do it. I tried to force self-confidence into my expression when it wouldn't come. I slapped my cheeks hard. It was in me somewhere. I just needed to yank it out. Yank out. I just needed, just needed to be yanked out of the You have to do your best, damn it! Hey, bro, get your mouth from in from get your mouth from under the bath water. That's nasty. You got all your dirt, nastiness, and grime in there. Yeah, get your get your mouth from under there. I lowered my head into the water ever so slightly, blowing bubbles in the water with my mouth. The pros and cons of returning to Heavenly Host were racing through my head. This is the power to challenge fate itself. To rewrite history. To rewrite it. And I'm a Shinazaki. So this is something that only I can do. I have to show everyone that I can bring them back. If only I knew where to find the Book of Shadows. I need to get my hands on it. Yeah. Calm down. Don't say anything crazy. Huh. Hey, bro, while I'm in the shower. For real. While I'm in the shower. If you don't go somewhere, bro. Why? Why are you doing this? You're seriously going to look for the Book of Shadows? Your lack of sense never ceases to amaze me. Huh? Huh? Ah! 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 Hey! Pervert! Hey, get him out of here! Police! Police! 911! Call them bastards! Fire in the booth! I'm finna shoot this dude! This was just about to let My foot fell asleep. Okay, my foot's asleep. Ouch! Ouch! Oh, this feels so wrong. Oh, my foot's asleep. Ugh, dang it, my foot's asleep. This was about the last thing I expected. I couldn't help but scream. It was that same boy who found his way into my room last time, wearing the exact same clothes. He spoke to me without once turning his head to look in my direction. So you know about the Nirvana now, huh? You finally piece it all together and realize what you have to do. He smiled, still facing away from me. It was a confident yet sinister grin. How does he keep ending up in my house? Do you not have any decency to not be in here while me, an attractive young lady, is taking a bath? But wh wh why? Why and how? Why are you in here? Hiding one's presence is about, the, is about as basic a spell as they come. There's no need for a blown gasket. Bro, get out of my freaking bathroom! I'm trying to bathe! As for why I'm here, it's to remind you. Remind you of who you are and what you have to do. Your bloodline carries with it a certain responsibility, after all. You, huh? pervert, stalker, molester, I'm calling the cops. My face had been as red as fire by this point. What the fuck, I'm titless? What are you calling a pervert when you got the body of a grade schooler? Ain't nobody gonna want to see a washboard like that. Hey, bro, calm down before I call Yoshiki to take care of you. He's not going to take kindly to those words. What? <laughs> my head felt like it was now housed. It now housed all the blood from my entire body. I imagined myself white as a sheet below the neck, 
and flashing right above it on the verge of a megaton explosion. Just listen up. The Book of Shadows is back in the Nirvana. It happened when you messed up at the Shinazaki estate. Here. Handed me the thautograph from Aiko. When did you... What are you trying to pull? Just look at it, you blind bitch. Right the fuck here. Yo, stop cussing so much. Oh my goodness. Calm down. I grabbed the photograph from his hands aggress as aggressively as I could muster. Then backed away slightly, putting as much distance between me and him as humanly possible. Oh, is that what she's carrying? The Book of Shadows? It was definitely the same picture of the little girl holding the hatchet that Aiko showed us earlier. But I noticed that she was holding something in her other hand, too. It was a hard-bound book around the, size of a, around the size of a typical desk dictionary. And though I could barely make it out, there was a certain aura to it that looked an awful lot like a face. My, it is. If you want to use its power, you got to go back to the Nirvana. Should I say back to Heavenly Host? Jump over there and get the book, and then maybe, just maybe, you can make your wish come true. He snuck out his hand and poured it directly in my face, then slowly lowered it down toward my abdomen. He was now inexplicably pointing at my lower body. But as soon as I started to get self-conscious, he flipped his hand over and opened it, exposing his palm. There was another piece of tin yin gum cup there. The same kind as before. I'm not sure why I took it, but I did without even thinking. As soon as the exchange was made, he immediately turned toward the bathroom window, apparently preparing to make his escape. Who are you? And why me? My question seemed to make him stop in his tracks. What else made him stop in his tracks with this track that's playing in my ear? This goes dummy. Aren't you going to explain all this? It just got a little bit of booty meat poking out the side. I wasn't about to drop my guard, especially given the obvious advantage this boy had over me. But he didn't even, but he didn't seem like he'd come to attack me or anything. Rather, it almost like... He was trying to lead me somewhere to show me the way. I can't answer that just yet. He turned his head to warn me just enough that I could catch a brief glimpse of his eyes beyond his hood. They were icy blue in color, but gentle and sincere. He smiled once more as he leaped out the bathroom window. I was kind of dumbfounded. I had no way out of process what had just happened. What's wrong, Ayumi? Are you okay? Mom barged in the bath, brandishing a broom. It was probably the first thing she could find to fend off potential intruders. Too bad she hadn't been a moment quicker. All I could do was squat on the cold bathroom floor and stare at her with hollow eyes. There was no way to adequately explain any of this to her. <sighs> uh, it was late at night and I still hadn't bothered exchanging out of my school uniform. I needed food though, so I decided to hit up the convenience store on my way back home. Picked up a bottle of olives, a pack of tuna, some mineral water, and other various things to keep me going for a while. What the hell is this? I could hardly believe it. There was actually an occult section in the damn mini mart. With all kinds of stupid stuff, like spirit talisman magnets and anti-demon wards. I grabbed one off the shelf and at random and looked at the company logo on the side. PL Promotions Co. Incorporated. For these last two months since we gotten back from Heavenly Host, it seemed to have been it seemed there was a real spiritual boom going on all over the world. Whenever there'd been whenever there'd be a strange death or something, the public would be all over it, downright excited about the possibility that it might be supernatural in nature. It was all over TV shows and magazines too, with independent researchers checking out spiritual hotspots, giving famous new age advice to people, just to boost ratings or sales. And now this, exorcism merchandise, next to prepackaged cupcakes and ready-made dinners. It's your talisman at the convenience store now, huh? Not long ago, I would have made fun of all this crap. Guess it's, not, guess it's not such of a laughing matter anymore, though. Never thought I'd see the day where I'd pick up one of these things and wonder if it actually works. 
The item I was examining happened to be one of the spirit talisman magnets, seemingly the last one in stock. <laughs> An old lady suddenly reached around from behind and yanked it right out of my hand. <laughs> She glowered, glowered at me for a moment before taking her prize over to the register. And I just stood there staring blankly at her before she walked away. <sighs> oh, oh, screw you too. Bro, what is her issue? <laughs> oh, I can move, okay. I should probably head home. Huh? Friend was a serial killer who'd recently done in a middle school girl around here. Was it probably left in memory of her or something? It's pretty messed up. That was a ghost. That we saw with Ayumi, she was a ghost. That girl that she died. Just a cat. Don't I feel like an idiot now? Oh, that's crazy. Carnival trash from home again. No, I want to explore the area more. Kishinomakun. Oh, snap. No. Shinozake. Shinozaki. What are you doing here this late? I thought you went home. I did. Sorry to accost you like this. You just got off work? Yeah, I had a late shift today. Wait, don't tell me you've been waiting here for me this whole time, have you? Man, I'm really sorry. No, it's fine. It was actually a really chilly night. I could see Shinazaki's breath dissipating around her chin in short, frequent bursts. I'm not fine. It's not fine at all. You're shivering. You can come in if you want. I'll, I'll get you some uh, hot tea or something. Thanks. Can I save, please? I would really like to save. I'm, I'm low-key getting kind of tired. Like, if y'all don't know, like playing, uh, as much as I love these games with a lot of reading in it, I get I get tired very easily playing them. Not like bored of it, but like literally like physically tired. Like, like I, I get short of breath and I start and my, my my body gets like really droopy when I play these type of games. So like I really need to hit a save point, bro, so I can so I can rest. My brain was on the second floor of the apartment brain. My room was on the second floor of the apartment building. I hadn't been expecting guests, but I just tidied up for my own sake a little while back, so it was fairly presentable. No, this room is perfectly clean. Shinazaki immediately sat down on my bed and began sipping the tea I made for her. She was holding it in both hands. Probably less for politeness and more just to warm the mug. Um, this is really good. Isn't it? It's from my sister. She sends it to me all the time. Such is made from really good leaves. The sound of a large truck driving by seemed to catch her off guard. She was clearly a bit jittery. Unsurprising, all the things considered. They do construction at this hour? Yeah, when it gets closer to the end of the year, they do all kinds of pointless work out there. It's like this every night. I've been sleeping like crap because of it. That sounds really annoying. Time passed us at a snail's pace. Soon as I could continue to sip her tea, never once removing her hand from the warm cup. She definitely had something on her mind. Something had happened. It was written all over her face. Are you fighting with your parents or something? Uh-uh. Don't worry about me. They know I'm here. They do? Yeah. Shinazaki was in my room. We might have to get free. Shinazaki was in my room. I dreamed about this before, but never thought it would actually happen. What's <laughs> going Hold on, don't let the freak take over yet, Yoshiki. Hold on. Huh? Uh, yeah, uh, oh, well, uh, um, this is, I just kind of want to know, uh, like, what you're doing here this late? Did something happen? 
You could say that. Huh? Seriously? You want to go back to Heavenly Host right now? I was half acting, as admittedly. This wasn't entirely unexpected. Shinazaki may be a lot of things, but unpredictable is not among them. Please. So you came here to get this stone from me. I took out the Ever After Stone I stolen from Maiko. Come on, Shinazaki, think about it. Yeah, the stones got all glowy so they could probably send you over. What do you actually hope to accomplish once you get there? What if you get stuck again and can't get out? You'll die. And if you die over there, your existence will be erased over here. You'll be gone. I tried to be as strong and commanding as I possibly could muster. I needed her to realize what a bad idea this was. I don't care if I'm a race. I just want to save our friends. Save them. The Grimoire, the Book of Shadows, I know where it is. That book you were talking about earlier? Yeah. Here, look. She had that photograph thing Aiko from Aiko with her. She was pointing at the little girl's left arm. She's been staring us in the face this whole time. Look, in her hand. That is the Book of Shadows. I didn't have to look very hard to see it, but... Okay, so she's carrying a book. Fine, but do you have any proof that it's the Book of Shadows? No, but I don't think it could be anything else. You don't think? You just have to go to Heavenly Host and get it back. Then we can save everyone's souls from the Nirvana. We can finally res resurrect Suzumoto and the others. How could I possibly argue with that? There were so many assumptions being made, but she was so sure of herself, so certain that this would work. It wasn't a hard to listen to reason. Shinazaki shook her head furiously like some sort of violent shudder. Almost like she was trying to shake something loose from her mind. But... But can these rocks really take us back to Heavenly Host? That girl, Aiko Niwa, was it? There was something just not quite right about her, don't you think? Well, we won't know until we test them, now will we? But if they don't work... But if they do work, the souls of all our friends are on the line, and I believe we have a real chance of saving them. She still had deep scars all along her arms, legs, and neck. Anyone could tell at a glance she just recovered from a serious accident. She sounded so self-assured, so self-confident, but it was hard to take any of that seriously. This was the first time I'd found myself tearing up over someone and not being embarrassed that I was crying. Honestly, it surprised me even how deeply I cared about Shinazaki and how much I just didn't want to lose her. My eyes were getting hot and glazed and I felt utterly helpless. You can't talk about this with anyone else, but you, you trust me, Kishinuma, don't you? I was at a complete loss for words. I found myself literally scratching my head, trying to come up with a good answer. This was Shinazaki. She'd come to me for moral support, for encouragement, peace of mind. It was really the first time she'd ever truly relied on me, ever truly counted on me. I knew then I, what I had to do. Damn it. You know what we went through in that piece of shit school. There's no telling what might be waiting for us over there now. But if you're sure about this, we should do it. Honestly, I have no idea what the hell you're thinking. But I promise you one thing and I intend to deliver on that. What one thing? I protect you no matter what. Shinazaki and I stared into each other's eyes for a moment. Each of us trying to figure the other out. Don't worry. Everything will be okay. I tried to force a smile. 
Hinazaki had basically curled up into a ball at this point. Her tiny body collapsed in on itself for support. But now all of a sudden she unfurled herself and glared at me. She, I couldn't tell if she was mad, happy, or what. Her eyes were like daggers or saucers. I couldn't really make out which. Maybe she'd come here expecting me to actively shoot down the her ideas. Maybe she thought she'd be alone in this. Maybe she figured out what I was up to. Or maybe she'd been expecting me to say exactly what I, what I said to her. And maybe it annoyed her. Either way, tears began to explode from her eyes. So quickly that the red banks were forming under them almost instantly. She then turned back to me, all in one seemingly unconscious spin of her body. Huh? Uh, uh, Shinazaki, are you okay? Uh, um, uh, during the day. Do you remember when you patted my head? She seemed like she was trying her hardest not to let herself cry, so it wasn't exactly working. Huh? Huh? I did? Yeah, you don't remember? She paused, seemingly waiting for an answer, but I had no idea what to say. And absolutely didn't want to say the wrong thing, so I just stood there like a dolt. Never mind then! If you don't remember, then it's fine. Finally, she turned back to face me, her tears almost dry. Still a little self-conscious about crying, though. She kept her eyes closed, a telltale frown, belying her confidence. There was obviously something between the lines for me to read here. But hell if I knew what it was. Ah, uh, uh, here, let me see your stone. Uh, oh, okay. Shinazaki removed the ever after stone from a pocket and placed it squarely in my hand. I positioned it next to my stone and stared intently at the two. It was a turning point. What I did next could decide our fates. I couldn't mess this up. Outside my window, I could still hear the sound of construction vehicles driving by. It was now or never. In a close, in as close to one solid motion as I can manage, I opened my window and chucked the two stones out into the road. <gasps> hey! I timed it perfectly and my aim couldn't have been better. Another truck was just about to pass by and the stones were immediately in its path. The sound I heard next to the satisfying crunch. The sound I heard next was a satisfying crunch. It was the sound of delicate glass-like rocks breaking into tiny pieces. <gasps> Shinazaki had rushed over to the window directly witnessed the fate of the Ever After Stones. As soon as the truck drove over them, she collapsed to her knees. <laughs> Yo, Shiki being smart. Like I said, I'll protect you no matter what I have to- Oh, crap! Oh my god, you slapped me! Ah! I couldn't even finish my sentence before Shinazaki's pump slammed my face with an incredible force. The loud smack of flesh on flesh echoed throughout the room. The side of my face was immediately in pain. I began rubbing it with my hand as I looked into Shinazaki's eyes. Her face was filled with tears and her nose was running. She was breathing so heavily her shoulders were bobbing up and down. <laughs> I never should have trusted you! Shinazaki, listen, I... I was wrong to believe you helped me! I should have known better! She was absolutely hysterical with rage. You think I could just stand by and let you go back there? Back there? It was my turn to fire back now. I was certain I'd done the right thing. How do you even know for sure that the book is there? How did you intend to get it back from that girl once you got there? Going over there with a boat without a plan would be certain death. I hate you. You're an ass, a delinquent, a worthless piece of shit. Leaving me with those hurtful words. Shinazaki then pushed past me and ran out of my room, crying like a child the whole way. I stood back up again, rubbing my cheek where I'd been slapped. Worthless piece of shit. Ouch. I heard ease. 
please. Please, God, where are they? Oh, gameplay. Something is running inside this mailbox. It smells awful. Nope. Oh. Found them. They're okay. But they were run over by a truck. Why would that matter? They aren't just any old stones. You. His hair is fire. Matthew is now in your grasp. The method is in your grasp now. Rest is in the opposition. Now it's time to indulge in what you want to push forward and put it put the method to the test. You can make the jump now. There's so much more than those filthy peasants. You can surpass them. You can interject your own will into the fabric of this world. Are you are you on my side then? Shinazaki! I'm miles ahead of this trash. Excuse you? Huh? Who the hell? That guy passed in front of Sachi Shinazaki's place. They're still intact? Damn it! Shinazaki, give them to me. No! This has to stop! You can't go over there! How many times do you think you can cheat death before death wins? End it over, damn it! Hey! Hey, bro! Hey, yo, calm yourself! You asked if I was on your side. I am. I'm your guardian. I was in no way your younger your sister's protege. I owe a lot to her. My name is Mitsuo Misu Misuto Kiria of the Yagora Society. You were my sister's good girl. You remember the chant to unlock their powers, don't you? Let's get started. Let me see those stones. Oh, don't tight to me in here. Your good luck charm. Don't lose it. Argus cube. Sh Shinazaki! Don't go! Don't! I'm sorry. You don't need to worry about me anymore. Shinazaki! <laughs> you should live the life of a peasant. It's only fitting. Yo, shut up. Stop. <laughs> Nirvana, I summon the dead. <laughs> Shinazaki! <laughs> This can't be happening. Shinozaki! Shinozaki! Damn it, why? Damn it! Where am I? This stench, this heaviness. Okay. 
Heavenly host. Misuto, where are you? The Ever After Stones. They're gone. What do I do now? Misuto must still have them. But without them, without those stones, I can't get back. I'm all alone in this school again. No. I can't start panicking. He's here somewhere. I'll find him. This is just how it happened last time, too. Like a pomegranate. Head so full of juice. Welcome. Candle? Candle pretty please? Man, honestly, it feels good to be back into the, the RPG style for, for Quartz Party. It feels good. I miss this so much. That's the same class when we first woke up in. Yeah, this the same way that um we went with Naomi and Seiko. It wasn't this dark last time. It wasn't a clock like that in here last time either. I guess things really are different now. Oh, Misato hasn't gone too far. I don't even know his phone number. Actually, I should leave a message for him. Misuto, it's Ayumi. Please call me. 090XXX. How is he going to put your phone number if he doesn't know the rest of the letter? Numbers. So stupid. Good enough, I think. Now, let's see if I can find him anywhere. That's the end of the episode, guys. If y'all enjoyed, like, subscribe, leave a comment, and read them all type in the next episode. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Playing Blood Drive. It's a mud ride. Hold on. We winning in a mudslide. Winning in a mudslide. Cause it's finna get dirty. Say this pen it get dirty. Your boy feeling party. Your boy finna party. Hold on. Finna go party. Your boy is eating hearty. Hold on. Eating heartily. I'm finna park the V. I'm finna heartily. Hold on. I'm feeling like an oddity. Hold on. I'm about to be. Hold on. Hold on. I said it's bound to be. Hold on, hold on, I said it's bound to get graphic. Hold on, I said it's bound to get tragic. Hold on, I said I got a new paddock. Hold on, I said I'm bound to cause havoc. Hold on. This is so hard. Why is it this hard? I don't know if I can, I can't focus on the game. This is just hard. We. 
I'm gonna let it calm down. All right, thank you. We're back on we're back on Course Party Blood Drive. Oh, okay. We're back on Course Party Blood Drive, and we're about to see what's popping off. Creek, creek, creek. But that music was so hard. I really just couldn't. I couldn't focus on what was going on, bro. I couldn't focus on the game. My apologies. Misuto. That is not Misuto. Uh uh. Turn around. Turn around. Let's turn around. Bit, 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 bit. It was a raining evening after school, just like this one. Nani? Oh, there's a flashlight over there. That has to be a person. I don't... I don't know if I want to trust it. Should be something I can use across this hole. Okay, we got to go back and find something. Can I pick this up? Nope. All right. Is this the piss bucket? Yep, yeah, this is a piss bucket. Murky yellow liquid inside the bucket, filling the hall with an obnoxiously nauseous odor. Oh, we got battery. Goodness, that's loud. So we are in the same. Sp Heavenly host is falling apart more than ever before. As a result, there are numerous hazards to watch out for. From broken glass to splinters, stepping on one will lower your HP. Depending on the hazard you encountered, only the currently selected player may get hurt or the entire party might take damage. Bandages. That. Something on the floor here. Bandage. That is a very interesting mechanic. I like that a lot, actually. That is a corpse! A, a dead body! Bef Before me were the skeletal remains of a human being sprawled out unceremoniously on the ground. Uh, this is definitely Heavenly Host. This person. I have no idea who he is, but somehow I feel like I've met him before. Is that Misuto? A name tag rests beside the corpse. Toshihisa Goto. Decapitation by wire while searching for a friend. That That's Misuto, isn't it? He got the same hoodie. He got the little, that hood over his head. Look like a boy. Bro, that might be Misuto. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I thought I thought I thought I could pick that up. Might come in handy. All right, let's avoid that. Let's let's not walk into that again, right? Right, fellas. All right, let's go. Pardon me. So they don't got they don't got traps here now, bro. Be able to cross now. Let's go. Yo, howdy, partner. Y'all know your boy got to click on everything. Hold on. Hey, uh, you trapped your two, sir? There's nobody here. Okay. Ah! ah! Bro, Ryan. Oh, that's Mayu? What? S Suzumoto? It's me, Ayumi. Ayumi. I've come here to find you. Hey, Mayu, Mayu, we cool. Mayu, Mayu, we cool. What you doing? I could probably lose her if I hide in here. 
You can hide in lockers to avoid harmful entities. However, if you're spotted by the entity while trying to hide, it can very easily pull you out. When an entity is near your hiding place, a red circle will be displayed to indicate danger. As it moves farther and farther away, the circle will turn green and eventually go away completely if and when the coast is clear. Press the confirm button to exit your hiding place, but beware, if there are any entities in sight, you will be immediately chased by them, so make sure you time your exit well. At least I was able to get away. I have to hurry and find Misuto. That was kind of spooky. I really like this new gameplay, I'm not gonna lie. So far, I think it's very cool. I wonder, do I have to worry about, like, making noise and stuff, though? <laughs> Ouch! Get in! Get in! Get in! Get in! She saw me go in? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Bandage, bandage! I, Mayu, Mayu, Mayu. Mayu, Mayu, aren't we friends? Mayu. Uh, all right, bro, shut up. Hold on, hold on. Hold on. Had to break her ankles. All right, don't get tired. Don't get tired. Don't get all tuckered out now. Enter. Hurry up! Oh, she's just hanging around the area. Shut up. Go away. Why? Why are you doing this? Bro, she's puppy guarding. Leave. She must have knew I was in there. You just gonna... Oh, that's why they needed this cutscene so I couldn't escape her. Who is that? Is that Yuki? Oh, but remember in the first game, it said next time we meet her, she's gonna be evil. So she's pro She's not on our side. My chin smashed against the floor and the wind was completely knocked out of me. My entire field of vision turned white as if I'd been drenched in some unholy phosphorophosphorus. <laughs> Yo, she's not gonna be on our side. <laughs> Yuki. Hey, who is that? Everything went black. Various indistinct forms blurred together in front of my eyes. And all of a sudden, it felt as if not my body, my mind had been shattered to pieces. What? That was the entirety of chapter one. Bro, if I knew that, I would have just kept playing.